Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. Welcome to Winter is Coming Wednesday, Episode 6. Today is a spotlight on two, like, multimedia type materials. One is the embossing paste, and to go with it, I have the brand new Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks, of which I have taken out the snowflake and the leaf pattern. So, since we are working on our fall and winter cards, those are the two that I worked on. I have some mock-ups, nothing's finished, and I want to do a demo of a second product that usually always comes out for me right around now, the Gilded Leafing. All right, so first I am going to not demonstrate how I applied the embossing paste, but I will discuss how I went through it because I actually want to show you guys the gilded leafing today. So here are two. First you can use two ways for the embossing paste. I'm sorry I did not finish that thought. Using the embossing paste without any color added produces this white nice effect. Uh, it is a, a bit of a rough surface and if you want you can focus on trying to get a non-smooth with your, you have to use a palette knife. Uh, there's a set of three I think that you get and then you can go for a smooth like this snowflake is perfectly smooth and it's kind of like um, frosting a cake whether you want it smooth or lumpy and textury so this one over here I let be textury so hopefully you could see that and that is the easiest way to use the embossing paste number two with the embossing paste is take a little container this is just a Dollar Tree container get some ink Reinker is probably the best way to get color in. I don't think there's really any good. I suppose this is a craft mat that I'm working on. There's the Stampin' Up! silicone mat that I have, and you could rub a, a corner of your either the full size ink pad or the cube on a, to accumulate some of the color onto your silicone mat, and then plop some of this embossing paste very close by to where you plopped your uh, ink from a pad and then use your tools to stir it up to get color. I did it a little bit the more dangerous way and I put, I used pumpkin pie and granny apple green. I did one little drop of each and then I mixed them together and I applied to in two layers. So this is this has actually two different layers. It and you can see where I've got some extra interest because the first layer was kind of one combination of colors between the pumpkin pie and the granny apple green. And then the second layer had yet different colors. And I will admit on the second coat, I took my tool just grab one here. I took my tool and I'm not even sure I have a whole bunch of crafting tools that are in a bag that have traveled with me and um, then when we had our trailer accident I ended up at home for many months while we got life re-going again and I pulled more tools so I can't tell you if this is the Stampin' Up! one or not but if you take your tool and you're working on your second layer and you have your stencil, the only one I have handy here is the snowflake. But pretend the snowflake, you place it over exactly and it, it fits perfectly. And then I did actually carefully add my second coating on purpose to different areas to get like the tips I wanted orange and the insides here I wanted green. And you will see for each leaf where I was focusing on the green being uh, on the back part where the freshest part of the leaf would be growing and the ends would be the darker. So that is a two layer. And then here is 
after I did that, I still had some green left over. So I went ahead and this is a Moody Mauve piece of the Fresh as a Daisy. All, it's just cut up into pieces. And I went ahead and added a coat of the mostly green. There probably is a little bit of pumpkin pie. And then I've trimmed it down and I'm gonna do some treatments to both of them using the gilded leafing. But for now I have used on the one that already has double layers cause I still am consider considering the double layers. So the nice thing about the masks, there's a good and a bad. In the, the masks, you can just add over the top as many times as you want and add as many layers as you want. However, when you work with the masks, the every time you change colors, you have to clean everything. So when I do use the masks for projects like this, I try to do a lot of them. I think I have one, two, three, four, five of them right now floating around on my desk. And it's, it's a thing you'll want to do in bulk because you're in the mode of coloring or not coloring your your uh, embossing paste and then you're running over to the sink to clean in between because your tools will dry as well as your mask and you want to try to keep the mask fairly clean mine isn't perfectly clean because I use this for two or three probably three layers uh, doing the snowflakes because I left them white so I didn't have to quite do as much cleaning in back and forth so uh, the other thing about masks that I may do a quick demo of, I have this one piece of the open sleigh, one horse open sleigh, sorry. And I want to go ahead and pull up this down and do some misty moonlight um, sponging. But at that, I'm going to do that at the very end. And let's see, discussions about embossing play, paste. So. I traveled in a trailer for seven years. I became a demonstrator in the first two months. We had left, we were on the road. I'd already had a selection of, of supplies. And then I was asked to become a demonstrator and it, it just worked out timing wise. Before I had never done it because I worked full time and had a, a very stressful job that did, just didn't have a lot of time for uh, doing the demonstrator thing. I suppose I could have done it as a hobby demo. So I went ahead and did it and I bought supplies. One of the supplies that I bought, I don't even know if embossing paste existed, but as soon as embossing paste existed in the Stampin' Up! lineup, I bought it. And the very first thing that happened is I opened it up and you'll see this silver rim piece. I think that this, this silver foily part you need to keep. It is the thing that keeps your paste from drying out. And I learned the hard way by, I think I removed this. Uh, sometimes it comes out if it's been sticky. I've actually shoved it back in there. Today when I took it out, it was stuck to the rim. And that's actually a good thing because you do want to seal your paste so it doesn't dry out. I have owned this now uh, two to three years, maybe three years. It's been more than two. Uh, because within the first couple of years of the first uh, bottle of that I owned, it got drier and drier until it finally turned to cement. Now, it was traveling in a non-temperature controlled environment. Very hot, very cold. It was stuffed. Uh, we didn't even have at that time the this Reflectix bubble material that you put as extra insulation and I've put it in we've put it in all of our cabinets everything that's closed in has reflectix in it and I didn't even have that at the time so through a series of errors I dried my first bottle of embossing paste then I bought another bottle of embossing paste the shimmer was the second one that I had and I tried to do a better job but I still hadn't caught on to the whole foil sealing thing so it dried out. So this is now finally my third bottle. I have been very careful to keep that foil seal in the lid. And like I said, today when I opened it, the foil stuck to, uh, not the lid, it stuck to the rim, which actually I was glad. So that's a tip for you to keep your embossing paste. You can try to reconstitute it. It, does, it never works perfectly. I remember with the shimmer, working with it and doing the best I could to keep it 
liquid, but I had lost my silver foil and I didn't even think of trying to use silver foil, just regular foil, to try to keep it sealed. But I could have done that. So then, when you work with these little containers, just be aware that I've cleaned it. Now I didn't scrub it hard, but you will need, like this container now is going to be my embossing paste uh, container. I think I probably have another one floating around here, but I couldn't find it today. So I brought out a new one. These you get from the dollar, dollar Tree. I think it was $1.25 for like 10 of them. And if you get lucky, you can find the screw top ones. I think it's four for $1.25. Um, and they have colorful lids four different colors and they're a little bit smaller than this size. So this is a perfect tool to mix up your paste and you do not need a lot. You probably need, oh golly, the size of, I guess a, a blueberry, a little round ball. Just kind of grab between a pea and a blueberry will give you this much coverage. Uh, it goes a long way. So, the, so start with very little until you learn how much you need. And so those are my tips. It does dry in a matter of minutes so you don't have a ton of room to work. Then you just take everything with you. Uh, I left this and I let it get a little bit dirty because I'd had some ink left in the bottom. So I left it here, went and cleaned off my mask and my tool, my palette tool which I have a knife shape floating around here also. Here. So there's this tool as well. I think those are the only two I have around here. Probably have another one in, in my zippered bag. So I left this with the ink and a little bit of the remnants, which is probably why I have quite a bit left over. Um, and then I was able to mix up this coat was actually the third. It was like the final. I had some left over and it was mostly green, so I went ahead and used it up. So, like I said, make just a little small batches or you're gonna get stuck with it and it's gonna turn into concrete in your, in your little container. So then for the next step for today, what I am going to demo, I have added, and I don't know if you can see, uh, mono glue, the t um, Tombow adhesive Stampin' Up cells is a a tacky glue and so if I touch it I feel its tackiness and I have had the best of luck having it to add the gilding leafing. The gilded leafing ad adheres quite well to mono glue and I have added the mono glue. I typically will put it on a craft mat and and pick up pieces and I will use a tool like this is my favorite tool to use this is the Stampin Up take your pick tool and I will just add it to the areas that I want it the nice thing about this being a 3d texture is it was easy to add bits of the mono glue and I'm gonna move the camera closer to me because I am going to oh and here is what it looks like when I move you'll see an, an area of the green that I was wiping off my craft knife right here. And so it's, and this will come off really easily off of that silicone mat or a Teflon mat if that's what you have. So now I am going to attempt to, I don't want to put a bunch of light because this is a glare surface. And I have tip or two about using the gilded leafing. It's so funny because to me, gilded leafing and embossing paste are all for the holidays, the, the fall and winter holidays. So whenever I get this out, I feel like winter is for sure coming. I have a fairly large uh, leftover meat, deli meat container, and you'll see it has some very little bits and pieces I try to put a tiny bit of the gilded leafing because it is really, really floaty. It is like, um, it's like soot. No, not soot. What am I trying to say? The remnants from a fire, the floaty stuff that 
floats up in the sky. So I'm just going to grab a couple pieces and I'm going to lay them. I And I've used this a lot and it still looks full uh, because it goes a really, really long ways. Um, texture paste for as much as this jar has. Like I said, it's on three years now. It lasts a really long time. As long as you can keep that embossing paste moist, you're good. Okay, so I just put just a couple more pieces in there. I actually tend to use my fingers and to manipulate what I'm doing. We're in Florida, so it's very hot here, and I have turned off my fan. No fans need to be going, because even as I talk, you'll see that this is wanting to float away. So I am going to grab some and look for some glue. And if it happens to stick to the paste, I'm actually kind of okay with that. I just want it to be sticking randomly and then I will work really hard to wipe it away. I'll pick it with my fingernails. Just to me, it's a very tactile thing to work on. And uh, I really enjoy, you know, getting inky. My fingers typically are always a bit on the inky side when I craft. I, I'm not a, I try not to be too messy, but I am messy. Okay, so I'm feeling for the glue. I grabbed a nice big chunk there. So I'm just trying to get a nice, uh, this is all to make a nice background that then I will uh, build up a series of layers. I haven't really got that far in the process of these. I will probably, next week for the next episode, I will continue to develop these. Uh, like I said, since I'm so behind this year, I will have to be doing multiples. So we're going to probably get into a multiples where I will be working on next week's stuff, creating either backgrounds or focals, and then I will show you whatever I finished from the previous week. I still think I owe a Regal Reindeer second project. Uh, that's over, sitting over beside me, but I got a hankering to do some something with the masks that I just received. So I do have finally some holiday items to work with. And there are, of course, I was working with the Regal Reindeer, which is an annual catalog. It is not in the holiday. You can get that all year round in the annual. They usually always have a couple of Christmas sets every year. So the nice thing about this gilded leafing is, is you're working it by hand or you're working with, uh, you can use a toothbrush, you can use a blender brush. Uh, my blender brushes I don't, but I have had people use the blender brush. You can use a paintbrush, probably a stiff bristled the stiffest bristle one I have here is this, uh, which I use for manipulating my embossing powder. Keep it wrangled nice and neat. Uh, but I just find working with my fingers gives me more control. I can also feel where the mono glue is because i that's my favorite way to adhere it. Um, I know there's other ways to get it to adhere. You can use, if you want to do like lines, you can use tear and tape. That works really well. So we're just getting this nice glint of gold on our leaves. I don't want it too much because I don't want it everywhere. And then you wouldn't be able to tell that we have leaves going on here. I think I'm feeling for glue. Oh, I felt some there, down at the bottom here. 
All right, and so um, as soon as I finish this, I do have some rough mock-ups. I've done, I got a couple of sentiments stamped, grabbed some, some trim to show you guys some possibilities, and then I will work more on these. I'm pretty much where I have to spend whatever free time I have working on these and then when Wednesday comes because it's now Wednesday I need to film whatever I've got ready so rather than wait I think that's gonna work best for me so we just have random gold I'll probably play with this a little bit more off camera so I just wanted you to see that that is this the effect I was after was just kind of a random and I think it's all adhering Oop, that one isn't so I will finish cleaning that up and now I want to show you some potential builds for these cards and if I find something I really like, that's when I'll go and repeat it a few times. Like I said, I do not like to do repeat cards. I am a one-off card maker. I'm not good at the multiples. All right, so this paper, by the way, is from the Earthen Elegance. And it's a textury paper. And I have used it for a few... Let's see, I'm looking on the back of this other one. What is that? Yeah, so I've used it for three. Uh, so the back of this one has the blue, which this could make a nice winter card. Uh, almost every one of the Earthen Textures paper, which I will have on the supplies list, uh, looks to me like it could be either Thanksgiving or winter. All right, so let's do, I have let me put a lid on this. And we've got, I'm not too worried about that. In the trailer, I would be way more paranoid. Um, I have a couple of gold trims that I just want to share. One has rolled away. Uh, there's the combo, which comes with silver and gold. That would go very nicely as a little knot or a small bow. This might not be the perfect match because it uh, not goes does not go very well with the the gray granite smoky slate, whichever one of the two that is. We have I don't think I have any more except for this right here for right now. So I have. a piece that goes underneath this if I could find it but first I'm going to do the easy way since I have white here and I the only gratitude I have right now is from earthen textures and it's the words with gratitude so that is very rough uh, I've got some leaf dies that are here that I have not pulled them out yet. They're the ones from the holiday catalog, so I will by next week have cut more pieces to work on this one and show you guys what I have. Oh, here we go. What I have going. I brought pecan pie as a possibility. I think copper clay would go well, and I'm wondering if even the early espresso, and that's kind of too dark. I think I would prefer either the copper clay or this pecan pie with a layer of white, possibly. And it depends on what other layers I, I end up putting on it. 
So that background I am very happy with. It was really super easy to do. I did it while talking to you so as you can see exactly how difficult it is to work with. My fingers aren't even all gold. I have a few gold little remnants here, uh, but easy, easy cleanup. Now I want to take the snowflake I showed you. And you know, I think I just had it. It's so funny when I get to videoing. Oh, here we go. I, I find that everything that was just right there, ready to go, just tends to melt away on my desk and I can no longer see it. All right. So this is just another quick mock-up. Oh, and for this one, I am looking for, I have this navy satin edged. The background is again from Earthen Textures, and this is the back side. The other side is like a, a pottery texture close up, and then this is from the a snowflake set which is called sparkling sparkling snowflakes so what I'm thinking for this one is that I may figure out a way to add the snowflake from this from the stamps on in hindsight seeing this now I have more pieces of this background. I might want to first do some stamping of those snowflakes and then mask this over the top. And then I might fussy cut a stamped snowflake with the snowflake on white using Misty Moonlight ink and then tuck it in, maybe split it in half and tuck it in behind maybe the vellum and what I was going to show you are the sequins that I pulled out that I just got that are super cool. I love the colors. And of course, as I always, oh, here it is. Just right when I give up, I should give up sooner. So these are called adhesive backed glitter sequins. And these, these uh, white ones is what I had in mind for here and for the next card I'm going to show you. So that's a nice mock-up. And then the next one is more subtle. It is also using, this is the, this is the texture side. And that's the back side of the earthen textures. And this one is coming out really cute. I have used this one inch white that I, I'll have all of these supplies. And then the this five eighths with the glitter is actually from a couple of years ago and it has still been, it was carried over. So I believe that is still available, but I will verify. And then I want to, with you, I wanted to pull these sequins out, a few of them, and see what I think. So I was liking these white ones. And even though I use the, the odd, odd numbers is good, but there's nothing saying you only can have three uh, if you want to add I have purchased Stampin' Up's crystals are a certain size and so I have a supply of teeny tiny ones that's what these are so if you're looking at them and you go those are super small how did she get those um, these are actually the kind that are you heat onto clothing I've had them forever from back in the day that I showed horses and I had you know the I actually used a heat press, but um, you can use like a hand bling heat tool to apply these to clothing. And I have just converted them into crafting supplies after I lost my first 
crafting supplies. I dug through my mom's house where all my stuff is stored and grabbed some of these for the road. So, and if you're curious, these are so small. They're called, it's Swarovski crystals is what they're called. And they're an SS8. I think that Stampin' Ups, I don't, you know, they do like four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter. And I think these are two and a half millimeter. So they're quite small. So here is one nicely mocked up background again trying to think of maybe a snowflake cut in half to emphasize the focal area of the sentiment and these three little tiny crystals must go back in they 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 stick really well you just take them and use the they're too small to use dots really glue dots and so I wouldn't use the mono adhesive I would use the where's the English of it fine tip glue pen is going to be your best bet for something that small because they are really tiny I pretty much again just like the gilded leafing I tend to bring out my Swarovski crystals for the holidays and then the final thing I want to share, uh oh, I, I tossed one of the sequins in here with all these little tiny crystals and now it's buried. Oh, someday it will, it will surface. So the other background, if I can find it quickly enough, I cannot find it. So I'm also working on the watercolor world which is a full background stamp uh, here it is and i have it on this acrylic block it's not the stampin up acrylic block because it's just staying on there while i make different backgrounds with it and the types of backgrounds I'll show you a mock-up because I do plan on doing as many of these as I can make myself do I have this background that I deckled to take out the middle and save for other pieces since I'm doing lots of cards and then I sponged um, with a finger dauber because I have these juicy ink pads I used Azure Afternoon and Granny Apple Green and I sponged it on and then I set the paper face down on the top, rubbed it up, peeled it off and then from there I used the Stamparatus to align this piece on earth right here because I knew it would fit perfectly in this bottom corner and then I plan to pop the whole thing up and I have, I'm toying with two colors, uh, the last year's metallics. I have the pink, blue, and green, and both the blue and green go. These are not the same blue and green. This is Tahitian Tide, and this is Parakeet Party. Uh, but they go pretty well, both of them. So I'm playing with, this is a double knot, and the metallic web material you can manipulate and you can widen it and do fun stuff with it. That's how it got to be feathery looking like that. And I'm not making my knot super tight and it's kind of loosey goosey, but I will, you can use adhesive dots to kind of manipulate these, these knots and keep them uh, in contained so they don't come completely undone. Okay, so I have now summarized everything I have been working on last week. So the one last little bit it hasn't it hasn't really applied is that uh, there are two black and white check trims. This one is in the annual catalog and there is a larger one in the holiday catalog and I went ahead and colored it with pecan pie blends just to show you that you can use this black and white check and make it any color you want. You can use your dye 
inks if you have reinkers or you can even rub if you don't mind your fingers getting messy maybe use a baggie and and just tap this on your pad um, and then maybe put it in the baggie and rub it until it fits you can even use um, your Stampin' Write marker uh, whatever color you want the Stampin' Write marker works just as well as the blends it's a little slower to dry and so you need to put it aside where the alcohol dries really fast so any of the white or cream trims even this trim here that I pulled out that has the gold uh, you can easily color any color you want so when I told you that this one might not work on this one here I can probably take this pecan pie and put pecan pie on it here I'll even do it and that will help it this is dark pecan pie so if you look at it and you want wow that's really dark it's because you get two colors a light and a dark and this is the dark one that I had out to do the plaid and you can go ahead and go over the gold the gold is a has a resist as part of the material and then this will need to sit and dry so now that's everything I have leave your comments questions uh, concerns on this video you'll find the supplies over on my blog be sure to do all those YouTube things like comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, I had to run off. And I forgot that I had promised I would take this background and do some stenciling over the top of it. And it is now dark. I have lights on and I hope that everything will be nice and clear for you. I sometimes have weird issues trying to work in the dark. So I have Boho Blue, which is one of the coordinating colors. And I'm doing a little, I just want it to be nice and light initially. All right, let's just see what that does. There you go. Now, let's say you don't like it. There is no problem with matching up what you've already done. And what I saw that I didn't like is that this big snowflake was not very well defined. So I'm gonna make sure on these larger snowflakes that I go around the edges. So there's a couple of ways that I can do a next level with this. I could leave it like this. I have pulled over my sentiment and this Knight of Navy strip and I could even look at softening but I don't think I want to do that. So that is how easy it is to work with masks and stencils. I have always called them stencils. Stampin' Up! calls them masks. So cutting this down, adding some more details. I do have floating around here a couple of these cute sequins. Let's 
So this is the One Horse Open Sleigh Paper. There are all sorts of designs that you could then use the snowflake mask on and trim the papers down and have a really cute card. So I just wanted to show stenciling. That's all I've got. I'm going to be throwing this in somewhere in the video uh, toward the end.